Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, we're back <laughs> again, finally. So uh, what we're going to do next on our Avastar, I went on ahead and epoxied our tail feathers in uh, because we had a pretty harsh winter. I uh, had a couple days where we were around 19 below and my epoxy and everything froze up. I got uh, that problem rem remedied. So um, I mixed up some epoxy, went on ahead and installed the tail feathers um, just to make sure everything was okay. And it is. We're good to go. So uh, what we're going to do now, the, according to the next step in the instructions, is to install the landing gear. And the reason we have to do that is for the simple fact we have to bolt our nose gear on before we can mount the motor. Because if we mounted the motor, the motor is going to be in the way of the installation of the landing gear. So that's why we're doing that. Um, the Avastar has always been real good about coming with uh, awesome hardware. Um, so we can go through that, but be careful not to lose anything because this has all the screws and everything we need to complete the build. But uh, our fuel tank, that's kind of obvious. We won't be losing that. But uh, we have our two main gear landing gear wires. Our nose wheel strut, it's got that spring on there. Um, I'm not real sure why they put a spring on there because it's like a 400 pound compression, but it's there. <clears throat> and of course all of our tiny hardware, this is critical, don't lose any of it. Um, our hardware for our fuel tank. They also included a spinner. And uh, all the screws for that stuff is actually inside the hardware bag. And, of course, three wheels right there and foam tires. If you want to switch to rubber, that's fine. You can do so. Some say that uh, the foam absorbs fuel. I, no, it don't um, because you're flying. Everything goes past that. You should be blowing your exhaust on your wheels anyway. If you have your exhaust blowing on your wheels, there's a problem. Your landing gear wire will absorb a lot of it because of the way the muffler is mounted next to the fuselage. So that's never really a problem. So, I mean, just use what they give you. It works just fine. Okay, well, I'll reset everything and we'll be right back. All right, here we are looking at the bottom of our fuselage. Now, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can poke around and feel the trough that has been cut out for the landing gear block. It's that hardened piece of wood that you can see from the inside. Now, the first step is, of course, we got to cut away the monocoat. So grab your X-Acto knife or your razor knife, hobby knife, whatever you want to call it. We're gonna just going to cut that covering away, okay? And you just layer in the trough and cut it right on out, okay? Fold it over a little bit, like so. And just slice her on out of there. Now, you can see that there are holes already there but we're gonna have to do something to those okay because our landing gear isn't exactly a square sharp corner now if you look at our hole we're gonna have to round those out a little bit and maybe even open them up always test fit before you apply so I'm just gonna take a wire and poke it in there it can be inside outside whatever we're just checking the fit that's actually really, really way tight. Um, that one actually fits okay. Well, no, it tightens up as you go deeper. So we're gonna drill those out, okay? And I'm gonna use my Rocky Mountain Twist uh, drill bit set and my DeWalt. We're gonna match a drill. And what I always do, is I'll just grab a wire and you can take your drill bit and hold it up next to it like so and uh, just see if we're about the same size because what we'll do we'll push that down inside there and we'll actually walk it around a little bit and then we're going to come up and lay it over to compensate for this radius okay and that's not a sharp corner so that's going to prevent that from seating all the way and we want that landing gear to seat flush with the fuselage this drill bit just so happens to be a 532. So I'm going to take the 532, drill that out. Remember one of my first videos, I said it's always 
important to trial fit everything first. And I knew this was going to be an issue before I ever started because I built a lot of these. I'm going to drill that out. And it's okay for that hole to go all the way through. See some of that epoxy we pulled up? That's uh, from where we coated the inside. So now I'm going to go ahead and poke it back down in there. I'm just going to wiggle the drill a little bit, okay? That way we get a good fit. And before I lay that over, I'm going to throw a wire. Okay. All right, now that fit really good. Now see, right here, that radius is keeping our wire from laying in the bottom of that trough, okay? That's the problem I was talking about. So we're gonna lay those holes over, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna check the size of the other one. That's good, okay? Awesome. So we're just gonna lay those holes over to compensate for that radius. The way you do that, you're just going to take your drill bit, put it in the hole. And you don't want to go through the side of the fuselage. <laughs> it can be kind of a tricky thing to do, but it's a part of it. It kind of takes some practice to do this. Using the side of our drill bit to cut <sighs> kind of like an end mill and we'll check see if we cleared enough out and there we are that is awesome okay I'll set the other one in there now sometimes when you lay that okay yeah I was gonna say sometimes when you lay that over It'll actually push some wood into the hole that was already there and may cause a little bit of a problem, which is no big deal. Uh, you just run your drill bit back through it, clear the hole out, and you're good to go. But now our wire is pretty much flush with our fuselage. So we should be good to go there. Well, I'm opening my hardware bag with all the screws and straps and all that good stuff. So what I like to do, get you a little dish. Just dump everything in there, like so. It keeps everything from getting knocked off the table and all that good stuff. So what we're going to need sometimes these things are done quick, fast, and in a hurry. And sometimes they'll forget stuff. But uh, it looks like we got everything here now. Nowadays these straps are actually made of nylon. But these are actually metal straps, that's why they're so thin. And what we want to do, we want to come in about an eighth inch off of the radius of our landing gear wire. And then we're going to put those right there. You're going to find four of these little wood screws. And it does require a little bit of digging. At least this isn't a whole lot of hardware. I remember when I built the 30cc Avastar, it came with like a five pound bag of screws and all that good stuff. So these are the four screws that we're going to use. And I can remember when I built my first one of these, this exact model. I lost half of everything, so I was raiding everything I could to uh, make it work. So one tool we're going to use to get this thing started is going to be our little pilot hole marker, in which I cannot find the sleeve, which is fine. This is actually a tool used for locating the center of the hole. And we're actually going to use, I might have to find that piece before we mount the motor because we're going to use that at that point. So, uh oh, hang on. Help. 
excuse me. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to place our strap, all right? And I'm going to mark a hole here. Let's see, I'm just marking it at this point. That way, when I go to actually do this, I'm going to use my DeWalt, or DeWalt, or however you want to say it, yellow brand, to drill these holes out. Okay. And I'll just do that with this 1 16th or so, because it makes life a whole lot easier when you pre-drill these. Still having some breathing issues, but a whole lot better than what I was. All right. All right, that is there. I'm gonna fish up a real bit of need. Yeah, we're going to use a 564 instead. That was my 116th. I uh, forgot. I let a friend borrow it. Or actually, I just let him have it because I know a guy that makes these drill bits. Okay, so we're just going to drill that out, try to get everything as straight as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. But, it'll make life a lot easier on you if you do. <laughs> Shoot for perfection, hope for the best, and plan for the worst. This one thing I've always said. Believe it or not, at one point in time, I actually had all this organized. This is my first time stepping down here in a couple months. So it's like I gotta refine everything. So we're gonna get a strap, get it there and get one of our wood screws that this thing came with. <laughs> My buddy Josh, he came over. And our plan was when I got this thing, oh geez, I was just a kid, you know, and he was too. We were the same age, went to school together. We were gonna build this thing in one night. Um, I was, it was summertime, I was working, made enough money. And I had to buy everything in sections. And what's really cool is I got the catalog that I ordered everything out of still. Isn't that crazy? Um, and it's not the actual one I actually ordered from. Um, one of the engineers I work with had it. And uh, he said, I thought you'd appreciate this and give it to me. Um, he was into cars. But anyway, Josh came over. And we were going to sit down and build this thing in one night. I'm getting everything started because i got to go upstairs and find the right screwdriver for this. Never use the wrong tool to get too far because you can wind up screwing yourself in the long run but I'm just getting this started that way I don't lose the parts. Um, I think we stayed up till three o'clock in the morning. My mom she uh, bought us pizza that Friday and oh my god I can remember it was Doughboy's Pizza and it was uh black olive mushroom extra cheese and those guys they piled the cheese on and the original instruction manual that came with this i can remember the guy that was supposed to help me with this he was cussing because i put a slice of pizza on this and the the grease and the nasties from the pizza was on the instruction manual well we stayed up to almost three o'clock in the morning building this darn thing we didn't get nowhere near it done but we sure gave it a valiant effort and uh we didn't have no dremel tools i had a hacksaw blade i'm gonna stop right there on that one i had a hacksaw blade i did all my cutting with and uh it was just a lot of fun um, we screwed it up nine ways till sunday um trying to do what we were doing i say screwed it up i mean it was just uh we were trying to do more than what we should have been doing. We had a, made a lot of memories doing that, had some fun doing that. A lot of jokes. 
you know, it was just a just a good old time. Well, okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Still not quite the right one. But no, that ain't gonna work either, darn it. Okay, well, I'm a little aggravated right now because I had the perfect screwdriver I used for little things like this and I cannot find it. Tools have a tendency to migrate. Um, if you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. So don't try this at home. Let's see what happens here. I tried this on another airplane and I snapped the heads of the screws off. So you got to be careful. <laughs> Alright, done. Not the prettiest job in the world, but uh, they're there. Alright, we'll move on to the nose gear next. Okay, here we are, we're moving on to the nose gear section, and this is actually a part where ARFs have improved drastically. You notice I have a pin mark right here. This is actually where the nose wheel steering rod is going to come through. I never really did like this about this ARF because we have to not only drill through the floor of the fuselage, but there's also a bulkhead we have to, or actually a tank support we have to drill through that is this right here this piece right there we're also going to drill through and um, nowadays if you've built an arm like this um, it no longer comes through the floor of the fuselage it actually comes out of the firewall but this is what we're supposed to do so that's what we're going to do now the instructions say make a mark two and one quarter back from the firewall and three quarter over from the side of the fuselage. And we're supposed to drill this at 30 degrees. Okay, believe it or not, I don't have a protractor down here. I do at work, but not at here. So I'm gonna drill the hole straight through the firewall first and then I'm gonna angle my drill back to go through so we can get to our servo tray with our push rod. Now it's an eighth inch hole. Get it right in the middle of the mark there. Get it in our hole, and again, we're going to use the side of our drill bit to do the cutting. And then through the fire, the tank support. Like that. I, looks, I don't like the looks of that, but that's what it is, and we'll smooth it out once we get there. Now, it looks like we marked our bulkhead but we didn't quite go through it so sometimes it may take a longer drill bit which I don't have and we can cut that extra monocoat away to get through it oh you know what I just I just had a thought I have the extendo bit. It's a little bit bigger than an eighth inch, which that's okay because we're gonna glue everything into place. Now that, that sucker's long. That's what they call an aircraft extended drill. It's a 12 inch long drill bit. Boom, just like that. Okay, now, we got that in play. We're gonna go ahead and mount our nose wheel. Now, this is always the front. And if you look, there's a flat right here, okay? That's so our screw can grab. And the way I do this, you can use a flathead or a Phillips on this. I'll get it started 
to where that screw is on the flat. Just barely a little bit of wiggle room, still allowing it to slide. Now if you'll notice, it kind of tapers out right here from where they grind it at the factory. You don't want to be on that taper. So you slide it down until it stops. That's where that taper is going to be. Go ahead and give it a tighten. Like that. Hey. All right, and now we got to secure that with a collar or space it, I should say. Well, that's just actually going to act as a spacer. Get it tight, make sure we're on our flat, and then we'll torque it down. Now on your steering arm, that's the long black thingy right there. You gotta be careful with that because that piece is brass. You can't over torque it and strip those threads out, so you don't want to do that. So we'll make sure we get that one good and tight, and then use a fair amount of pressure on your steering arm. Okay, and then see this will actually slide in here. Like so. And that collar acts as a spacer, so everything is clearing the bottom of the fuselage. And we're gonna put another collar on top here. Now when these things come, that's your collar. Then you have your short machine screws, like that. And always, sometimes, nowadays they actually send little set screws and they're a lot easier to lose. You'll screw that down in there and you can see that hole. See how it's poking through the hole? Just back it up to where it's going to come out of there. And then, Sorry, I'm so shaky. That medicine I'm taking makes me shaky. We will let's see if I can get this on camera here. Oh, it's kind of hard to set this up. <laughs> Bear with me. I got this little cheap camera mount. Right, there you go, you can see it now. You can see we have that little bit of control rod poking up there, or the steering rod. I'm gonna slide that on there. Using my finger tip like so. And then tighten her down. Remember, if this is easy, Girl Scouts will be doing it. That flat extends all the way up that rod, so you want to be on that. So I'm just kind of being gentle here till we get it started. Now it feels like it grabbed right there. Yep, it did. And we'll tighten that sucker up. Fair amount of torque. Now you can pop that off there because that sucker does not come up very far past that, okay? And probably what I want to do is put a little bit of glue down on top of this very top collar. Just like that. Okay, now our steering rod is going to come up through our hole we made and control our nose wheel. I will move on to that next. Okay, now it's time for control rods. Now, this is where it can get kind of funky. They make these really cool Z-Bend pliers. 
Um, you lay your control rod in like so, all the way to the end there, and give her a good squish like this. Look at there, nice Z-band, really handy. If you don't have Z-band pliers, that's fine. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers and bend like so. Okay, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you don't really have to have them. But man, those Z-bend pliers make it sure make it nice. Now there's gonna be two parts to this. This is a 17 and 3 quarter control rod made out of spring steel. Okay, it springs back. Well, to keep that sucker from buckling inside there, we're gonna have the control rod tube, which is this piece right here. Now you can fight with your tube all you want. Actually, this one will actually, I'm saying it'll go fairly easy. Just like that, okay? Not a problem. Sometimes if you're fighting with it, um, you can actually insert, find a hole we made, insert your control rod and then slide your sheath around it the uh, control rod too. What we're going to do in this case is put them both in at the same time. Just like that. I may be able to See the instructions said to put this in first, but I'm going to tell you something. Probably would have been easier to slide this on with the control horn and then put that on. That's okay. We can come back and slide that on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a quick measurement here. I want to pull that tube out to where it's just past that. And I'm going to glue it. And I'm going to use a medium CA because we're gluing to plastic. And you want it to kind of sit a little longer than fast typically would. And another thing we're going to do, we're going to sand that sheet just a little bit or the control rod tube. Now you notice in your package there's two of them in there, okay? Two of those uh, control rods. One's for your throttle. And we'll deal with that when we come to the engine. And then so long my CA bottle has kind of seized up on me here. It's always handy to keep a little piece of control rod hanging around. Sometimes you can jab it down in there and clip the end up with your knife so I'm going to get a little bit of this uh, fine 3M sanding pad I have here I'm going to sand the end of that it gives that glue something to hang on to I want to get it stroking back and forth like this that way it gets some lines to hang on to that way. Then also, I'm gonna spin it on there as well. That way we get a good cross hash of everything that needs to happen. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in there. Got the control rod. That way we don't glue anything to you. Nothing that's not supposed to. Take my finger and hold that down. I'm gonna fill that gap up where we over drilled that by size. Okay, now you see I let up. The reason I did that, we're gonna let that glue get down inside there. And then without pushing back, man, I hate this medicine, it makes me shaky. And we're just gonna hold it there for a little bit. See, it almost grabbed right there when I slipped off of it. I'm gonna hold it there. Let that grab. 
And then we're gonna let that dry before we come back and do any work. But while that's drying, I'm gonna pull this nose gear and we're gonna insert that control rod. I'm gonna insert it on the outside here. As you'll notice, okay, there's that part. I don't know if I have any zip kicker or not up here. Oh, yeah, I do. We'll just give her a splash of uh, kicker, what that is. It's a chemical you can spray on CA that makes it finish drying really fast. Uh, the disadvantage to that is it, uh, it makes it kind of hard to sand, but we're not going to sand it, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to undo the little bit of work we did up here. Take that wheel collar, slide that out. There's a piece, there we go. Take that and install that. See, that's how a Z-band works. We're gonna er, 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 steer just like that. Then I'm gonna insert this, like so. This will be a little tricky. It's gonna be kind of hard. Partly because our, there we go, our uh, push, our control tube, control rod tube was pushing against our back bulkhead. Cause not letting it go through. Oh man, 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 just like that, man. Isn't that cool? That's slicker and snot on a doorknob. All right, now we can put this all back together. Let's see if I can do this. I think they should change my nickname to Crashy to Shaky. Alright. Get that tight. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> now we'll cut that down later. You can see our tank mount where we went through. And this will actually slide over to there, like so, to go on our rudder servo. That's going to be right above our throttle linkage, too. Or we can glue that later if we want. But now, what do you say we get some feet on this bad boy? We're gonna need wheel colors and our wheels. So let's dig those out of there. You know, it's kind of aggravating my uh, computer over there. I'll record a section of video, put it on the computer, review it, make sure it looks okay, and then go on to the next. I was in the middle of doing that. The yellow bellied sap sucker decided it was time to update everything. And restart on me. Uh oh. We are missing a wheel color. That's all right. So now we need our screws. We just mainly need them to keep from falling off. What I like to try to do is put one on either side of the wheel. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, I'm sorry. We got like left wheel, right wheel, and then nose wheel. The nose wheel only has one wheel color on it. I was reading in the book right quick there. So we're good. We're doing what the book said. I couldn't remember that part. I just got in the habit of putting two wheel colors on. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let me see, I may 
have. Yeah, I'll put one of those other screws. It's okay. Just make sure the thread size is the same. Okay, yep, that's the same. Okay, what happened is, you notice, and this is just fine. I'll put this one on the nose gear. Notice those two screws are different. This one was actually supposed to go into the control arm section. Same thread size, it's just a little bit longer of a screw, but those short screws work just fine. What I'll do, I'll just use this one on the nose wheel. And make sure you can see everything okay. Okay. Now this, I'll tell you what, sometimes this stuff, like a great deal for $5.95, then it gets here and it's a piece of shit. Okay. All three of these wheels are the same size. Which, that works out perfect. Sometimes, I know in kit builds, your nose wheel will be a larger diameter than your main gear. So, whoa, we got all three sizes here. And uh, what we'll do... Get a wheel color started. And the reason why there are two wheel colors on the main landing gear is to keep your wheel from rolling up on the radius and actually acting as a brake. Now what I'm going to do is actually glue these into place. Uh oh, my daughter made some cookies. And uh, we're going to try one out here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Those are good, sweetie. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I'm her taste tester, I guess. Well, what we'll do is put some uh, thread locker on there. As soon as I can find it. Here. I see lock by Bob Smith. Now back before the days of thread locker, you always wanted to do this other way. Gravity to work for you instead of against you. But since we have thread locker, I'm not worried about it. This is actually pretty good stuff for your non-heat applications. Um, I do recommend, however, um, using your red lock type, like for muffler bolts and stuff like that. Because this lock type, this blue, when if it gets hot, it'll melt. Which that's how you turn your lock type loose is you heat it up. And then, bam. You heat it up and then it turns loose. And cheap cigars, man. It's about time for a breathing treatment, I think. Get that little sucker started. Put that on there. You can put it on there so your wheel is free spinning. So what I do, I push it up against it and just back it off a little bit. I mean, really, if you want to, you can slide it right here. I'm just thinking in case vibration hits and it tries to work loose, you give it a little bit of room to wiggle. But you want your wheel to be able to spin freely like that. After all, it is an airplane. It's made for flying, not driving on the ground, right? A little bit of red blocker there. Screw. Slide that on like so. Now the thread locker, typical rule of thumb, it's 24 hours before it's actually doing any good. 
Don't get no wise ideas. Put our wheel on. We got our last wheel color here. Yeah, I can remember why they did that now. Because this is on a 90 degree bend where the other ones aren't. Sucker on there. Steady hands helps. I'm just saying. I got my good microphone on. You guys have been having to listen to me for the crappy funk, huh? Microphone on the camera or on, yeah, on the phone. See this one, you just slide that sucker on there. It's gonna come up against that bend and everything be a okay. Get that one started. she needs is the motor up front to hold the center of gravity but we got our feet on her all right I'm gonna take a break I'm not feeling real good right now so um, we'll come back and I believe <sighs> yep we're gonna do our motor next okay so when we come back we'll be doing that all right, folks, I just want to thank you for joining me in this episode of uh, Big Sky Hobby Corner as we've advanced, advanced our um, Generation 1 Avastar in the build. You can see we have her setting well on our feet on a messy workbench, and you can see that Super Tiger 45 setting on the nose of her. Don't worry, I haven't taken any steps yet. I put it up there just to hold the nose wheel down to set the center of gravity. Thus far, we're not truly balanced, but... Uh, in our next episode, we'll uh, get the motor mounted and set our throttle linkage and have all kinds of good stuff. So I'm going to cut this one short. We're going to hit the editing floor, put it all together, and uh, get her posted. Anyway, we'll see you next time on Big Sky Hobby Corner, and thanks for watching. Don't forget, while you're here, to hit that like and subscribe button, and go on over to our Facebook page and give us a like there as well. Also, we are located on Google Maps. Make sure you look up Big Sky Hobby Corner and give us a positive review there as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.